All right. So, damn, that car sounds powerful. All right. Damn, so many. You heard so many yeah. backfires on that car. <laughs> that car was spitting fire. All right. So, I shaved down that side. So, damn. <laughs> still hearing that. Yo. I want my car to do that. You hear that, YouTube? I'm going to start spitting fire. All right. So, yeah. Like I said, I shaved down the edge so it fits around the manifold and replaced it with bolts. Regular bolts because these star shits are annoying. And you plug it in, obviously. Obviously, if you don't know how to unhook this, you would take this metal piece off, bend it over, and pull it out. But, yeah, that's that. Next up is... Getting a torque or an allen key to fit in that hole and then pulling it up and putting in the oil feed. Just like that. Okay, so after we put that on, uh, forgive me guys, it is nighttime now. Almost, it's like evening. But yeah, put that on. You're gonna need a special nut. Or to put inside that bolt. And right now I got my handy dandy snap on light. Um, hold on, let me put this up. Okay. So, what you'll need is kind of like this Allen key, kind of. But like a bit, kind of. And make sure you get your handy 20 inch extension. You could get a 10 inch or 15 if they make them, but I recommend. I recommend buying one of these extensions, because especially to get to those bolts down there, all the way, those are crazy. So yeah, nice 20 inch extension, picked it up for like 10 bucks, Amazon. So yeah, you see that hole off the distance, or like I was showing you from before, you would put it in there, obviously, and make sure it's nice and snug, right? And now you try that. Try to loosen it, but obviously I had to go get the torque wrench because this shit gives me more more leverage, and I'll be back when it's loosened. Okay, guys, so yeah, I got that bitch loose. Takes a lot of pressure, and once you finally get it, you'll hear a nice, satisfying snap. It's like a click, huge snap. But yeah, as you can see, it's moving now. But, uh, yeah, I'll take the bolt out and show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, that's what it looks like. It's on this tool, my handy-dandy reaching tool. As you can see, it's a magnet, obviously, and a flashlight. So, um, so yeah, that's what it looks like. Taking off. Focus there. So, yeah. Uh, you would add your old bung in there. Oh, yeah, I didn't tell you the reason. Yeah, it dropped in a hole. That's why I'm using it. So, yeah, dropped in a hole. So, I got it. Boom. Fuck mosquitoes, man. These mosquitoes are crazy. Boom. Yeah, yeah, that's why I got it. Boom. And boom. This is what you guys need to buy. A 4 a.m. bung. It looks like this. Obviously, this side will go inside the engine. This side will come out. So you can screw on a stainless steel braided hose. We only use stainless steel braided hose out here, okay? You don't want nothing bursting. So, boom. Let's put that in. And call it a night because it's kind of dark out. Even though I'm under my canopy. Kind of dark out. Right down there. Now that's the challenge. Now if this thing drops, it's not metal. So that should piss me off. I got this. Okay, so it's the next day. And uh figuring out that this thing wouldn't fit. I'll we'll have to go get another a bigger size, because as you can see that's actually a big hole. Uh now when you take out the bung, well not my bad, the cap. It's a six AM, aka Three eighths. So you know you could go to any hardware store, Home Depot, or whatever, 
and get a 3 8 fitting. Make sure it looks like this, right? Uh, yeah, so 3 8 fitting and make sure that it has threads on the inside. So it's a 3 8 male to a uh, 1 4th female. The threads on the inside of the female, obviously, threads on the outside of the male. And this, this being a 4AN, or AKA 1 4th, this would screw perfectly into this. So, yeah. So, before you do anything, make sure you line everything in Teflon tape, which is this. I got it at the same store for a dollar. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, and by the way, this fitting should cost no more than 250 If they say anything more, then they're ripping you off. So, yeah, I'm gonna line the, the outside threads with Teflon, just like how I did that one, and be back. And it should look like this, all nice and neatly wrapped. And of course the interior one too, so um, yeah, now you fit it in that hole. Now, it's kind of hard to fix your hand now. So what I recommend is you need the end your reach-in tool to put it in and then you can screw it in with your hand. Or, you know, you just be a badass and fit your small hand down there. but. Yeah, whatever works for you. Okay, so I got it on the hole. I got it in there. So um, now you just take your handy dandy deep socket 11 16 and you can fit over both of them just like that. See, just like that, over both of them. And of course, you tighten. Tighten until you can't go no more. So I'll come back. Okay, so after you do that, you tighten the top fitting with your handy dandy, what size is this? 13, I believe? Yeah, 13. Boom. So you, you would tighten the top piece, obviously, with the 13, which is a 4 a.m. 4 a.m. for yeah, metric and whatever a.m. is. Um, yeah, make sure the bottom fitting is really tight with Teflon tape. And actually, the top fitting, you don't need to put Teflon tape. I just learned that. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so everything is tight and snug in. So I get a better angle here. Oop. Yep, everything is tight and snug. I believe that's as far as it goes in, but we will try and tighten it with a half inch. But uh, yeah, guys, try and get it as tight as you can, all the way in the hole. Better for no leaks. Um, yeah, so that's basically the whole front part of the engine done. You have the injectors, oil bung, the, uh, the four bar sensor. Uh, next, we will. If you guys are having an oil pressure sensor or, or temperature or all the above it would be for our car since there's no place for it you would put a sandwich adapter on it now you can get a whole bunch of those let me take a seat uh, yeah you can either get one from pro sport you can either get one from mishimoto i got one from mishimoto uh so yeah as you can see this is where the oil filter goes if you guys don't know that Learn your Lancer. Um, yes, where the oil, oil filter goes. Let's see, oil on my fingers. Nice. Um, so the sandwich plate would screw on there, and then the oil filter would go on there. And then, uh, the reason why I picked Mishimoto is because, uh, it has a 1 8 fitting where the oil pressure sensor would go into. So, you don't need to buy an extra adapter for that. Just screw it on, screw the plug, and then run it through the firewall. And uh, what's the next thing? Oh, but before we do that, let's actually run our lines from this bunk since it's actually in now. Okay. Oh, uh, what 
would I recommend? Uh, obviously, stainless steel. Well, not stainless steel. Uh, a steel braided hose. Don't get nothing else but a steel braided hose. We don't want any hose or lines popping out here. So uh, you would screw it up. I got a 90 degree fitting. So it would the fitting would screw on to the hose and then screw into there. And I will run it this way through the intake manifold. Well, not through it, but under it, obviously. And run it back towards the turbo. It should be back there. Um. Minimum of three feet, maximum of what four feet, but don't get anything that's like five feet. If you get five feet, then cut it, you know what I mean? But yeah, like a minimum of three feet, and I feel like that's even pushing that. Maybe like three, maybe like three and a half feet. But yeah, just buy a decent size and cut it, you know what I mean? There's nothing, nothing wrong with cutting it. So yeah, 4 a.m. 4 a.m. line would run through here and go towards the turbo buckle back. When I come back, I'll do that. Well, I won't do it, but I'll hook it up so you guys can see. Okay, YouTube, I went and I got the fitting. Let me just sit down and explain this to you. Alright. Obviously, this end... The camera would focus. This end would go towards that side just like that right and the, st the stainless steel uh, hmm, hold on yeah so the braided steel line right would hold on for a second right so The braided steel line would hook onto that, hook onto that piece, and forgive me, it's hard to do it with two hands, but yeah. And then this, fuck the camera. Okay. And this would go over the steel, stainless steel braided line and screw back onto that piece that you've seen like that so yeah remember this end would go onto the steel stainless steel and this would be over it yes it will be a bitch to put this thing over the um, 4 a.m. stainless steel braided line you have to fit it on properly and then once it's on connect the holes to there and then you know screw it back on the way it was it's like that so, uh, I'll come back and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, guys, so we're back in my office. It's really hot outside. So, like I said, uh, this is your stainless steel braided hose. And you would screw that part off, just like I said, screw that part off. And this, this end will go into the hose. So I'll put that on for you. Just like that. It's not gonna stay in obviously because I'm not serious about it, but yeah, that would go in there. You, you get the fucking point. Now this knowing that this has to screw back on that way, that way towards it. This end was made wider, so I was. You would hopefully the stainless steel holes that you guys bought would be tamed off at the edges, but I gotta do it myself. But yeah, once that's tamed off, even though it would still be a tight fit, so you would push this end all the way, you know, until it gets on, obviously. Then you know you would put that on. Just like that, just like that, and then pull it back up. Once it gets here, you start to screw it. Start to screw it, you know, so it's a tight fit, just like that. 
This is not the holes I'll be using it on because this hole sucks. I'm getting me a better one soon. But uh, yeah, that's basically how it works. And just in case if you guys wanted to be nosy, here this is my office. Um, got all the cool shit down here, all the turbo parts, got an airplane, and I'm fucking nice. Um, all my turbo parts are there. The green pipe you're looking at is the upper intercooler, upper intercooler piping. If you watched my previous videos, you would see that I painted that green. Um, more holes and shit boxes. And that's magical turbo, like, yeah. Um, and, you know, gauges and... But yeah, we'll get to that in a later video. So now we're going to go right back outside and install the rest of this shit. Next, I got these spark plugs. Would be obviously it's really simple to change spark plugs. If you guys need help changing that, then there's something clearly wrong. You should not be turbo in your car. But uh, yeah, we'll be changing these to the. These are like. Already on spark plugs, uh, a heat range of eight, which is two ranges cooler than the regular OEM um, spark plugs that you're supposed to put back in, in the GP and the GTS, and then which is like a heat range of ten, I guess. But this is a heat range of eight, so you would get spark plugs that's two range colder. And this will be pretty simple to install, you know. Just gotta make sure that that they're gap properly and put them on. That's it. 